As data is flowing back and forth between an application that we've written, or maybe an application that we've acquired from somewhere else, but as data is flowing back and forth between that application and maybe a network controller, let's say an APIC EM, the format of that data is commonly in the JSON format. JSON, that stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Another commonly used format is XML, Extensible Markup Language. But in this video, we want to focus on the JSON format, because if you've not worked with JavaScript, JavaScript, it can look a little bit intimidating, a little bit hard to read, even though its intent is to make it very readable for humans. And I want to simplify it for you. So no matter how complex it looks, you can realize it breaks down really into two basic structures. There's one structure that's a collection of name value pairs. That sounds a lot like a Python dictionary, doesn't it? We've got a name, we've got a colon, and then we've got a value after that colon. Then we also have, as the second structure, we've got an ordered list of values. That sounds a lot like a Python list. Let's first consider that collection of name value pairs. That's called an object. And an object is going to be an unordered set of these name value pairs, again, just like a Python dictionary. And we're going to have the name and the value separated by a colon, just like in Python. And also this object, it's going to be contained inside of curly brackets. So as an example, let's consider my first and last name. Let's say I've got a name of first name, and the value associated with the name of first name is Kevin. Kevin's the value. I've got another name and its last name, and the value associated with last name is Wallace. Notice that everything is enclosed in quotes, and the name and the value, they're separated by a colon. And this is a valid JSON format. However, you typically don't see it written like this. Typically, you see lots more white space. This makes it easier to read. You're more often going to see it written something like this. With the white space, we're going to have an opening and closed bracket, typically on their own lines. And inside of those brackets, then we're going to have the contents. Notice that each name value pair is on its own line. And we said that JSON had something similar to a Python list, and it's called an array. Just like a Python list, an array is an ordered set of comma-separated values. And these are enclosed in straight brackets, again, like a Python list. Here's an example. Let's say that I've got some different certifications, represented as strings, inside of these brackets. Each string is enclosed in quotes, and each string is separated by a comma. However, in the JSON format, we typically insert lots of white space. We've got the brackets on their own lines, and we've got each individual value on its own line. So it looked more like this. And when we talk about a value, I've just been using strings in this example, but let's be more specific about this. A value could really be several things. A value could be a string, like we've already seen. It could be a number. Or here's something that we see very often. The value could be an object. We could have an object with the curly brackets. And nested inside of that object, we've got, as a value, another object. You could have objects within objects within objects if you wanted to. We could also have an array, as we've just discussed. We could have a value of null. Or we could have a Boolean value, like true or false. And when you're working with JSON formatted data, it's often a good idea to do a sanity check to copy paste your JSON formatted text into some sort of a JSON validator to make sure that it's in an appropriate format. And you can do a web search to find an online validator of JSON formatting. Let me show you one that I most often use. It's jsonlint.com, jsonlint.com. We could type in or we could paste in our JSON encoded data here. I want to click on the Try Pro. I like this interface a bit better. Let me zoom in just a bit so we can see it. And let's enter that first object that I was showing you earlier. Let's do our outer brackets and then I'll do in quotes, first name, close quote. And after the name, I'm going to give a colon and then we'll give the value. And the value is going to be Kevin in quotes. And I want to have another name value pair. I separate those with commas. And I'll say last name in quotes, colon, and then give the value of Wallace, close quote, close curly bracket. And even though this is valid formatting, notice what happens when I do the check over here on the right hand side. It puts it in a format with extra white space like we were talking about. And by the way, here's a gotcha that I want you to be cautious of. 
If you type up JSON encoded data in some sort of a text editor, and maybe you paste it in here and you do a check on it, even though it might look right, it might come back and say, no, this is an error. Here's a really common mistake, a common mistake that I've made anyway, and that is not using straight quotes. Notice these are perfectly straight quotes. They're not open and close quotes. They're not slanted at all. They're just straight quotes. You've got to use straight quotes when you're doing your JSON formatting. And that's going to wrap up this video with just a short look at how we can better interpret JSON formatted data when we encounter it.